Welcome back to a second season of Indie Sponge Cover Jaggernaut. We had taken a small break, actually a longer than anticipated break, and we chose June 3rd, Thursday, Christmas morning for Cinephiles to relaunch um, Kevin Jaggernaut. Uh, we woke up extra early this morning to see what Thierry Fremo had on his um his presence list. Um, so yeah, let's dig into the announcements that were made this morning. Sure, yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say that uh, the Cannes 2021 lineup is stacked in a way that we, we, uh, we usually dream about. We don't always get it this way every year, but it's O tour heaven um, right across the board. Um, and we can, we can start, I guess, with the competition lineup uh there are a lot of uh, films that we expected uh maybe we'll start there and then we can get into the stuff that is a nice surprise so this year um is a, is going to be a year that we is going to be in the history books we're going to look back at 2021 as being this huge a wave of positivity fresh cinema a lot of these titles are perhaps not fresh, they were in post-production for the longest time or um, being tinkered around with. Um, and um, and the, the, the festival is a little bit longer. So we have 24 comp titles, maybe City's gonna add another one in a couple of days, but that's a lot of films for a competition. That's about three to four films per day for the jury. That's gonna be headed by Spike Lee. We don't know who else are gonna be um, um, on the jury as we speak. Um, but uh, we open with Annette. Uh, we have Ty Joe, we have Verhoeven, we have Wes Anderson. Uh, these titles were, the, the, the status of these titles, they, they, they were gonna be with the Cannes Film Festival. Um, it was pretty much a done deal. We have Moretti, we have Jacques Odiar, we have Asghar Farhadi. Uh, Bruno Dumont, and we have, um, uh, we could even add to that list, uh, Karel Shabrinikov for Petrov's Flu. Those, those titles were pretty much established ahead of time. Um, any thoughts on, on these um, returnees? Uh, no, but I, I think that these films that we expected uh, I think it just speaks to uh, the strength of the relationship uh, Terry Fenomo has with these filmmakers that they would hold like, you know, as, as far as I know, or as far as is a best guess, um, like Benedetta has been done for a while. Memoria, I have a feeling was done for a while. Um, so yeah, it just speaks to these filmmakers deciding to hold their films uh, for him and for this festival. Um, yeah, but all top tier titles, all things that are are uh, are going to shape the conversation for the next few months. So we have actually in the 24th set, we have a lot of newbies, first time participants in the competition. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement for uh, a second feature film by Julia DeCarno called Titan. Uh, I believe this belongs to Neon. Um, we could add Sean Baker to the list. That's his first time in competition. Red Rockets, uh, an A24 title. Um, those are, are two that, that really, um, I, I'm really anticipating. What are your thoughts on Sean Baker being uh, added to the main comp? Yeah, that's a nice, there's a few directors I feel who are making a leap here into comp. Um, I believe Justin Kurzel is also first time in competition. Um, was I Kelly wanna, Gang on? I want to say that Kelly Gang was uh, Tiff, but right. uh, I believe I want to say Macbeth. If that makes any sense? Possibly, possibly. Uh, yeah, you're right. Macbeth was in comp, but uh, it's been a few years. But that was uh, 2015, so it's a uh, six year six years later. He's returning, so that's really really um, interesting to see. So, um, yeah, go ahead. For Kurt Sell, I, I want to say that a lot of the trades is sort of like forgot about in the tram. Uh, in the tram yeah. was sort of like under the radar. 
it might actually harm, uh, harm, it might be closer in, in terms of DNA, in terms of uh, budget um, to his actual, his first film, which was at the Critics Week. Uh, Snowtown Murders. Exactly. Um, yeah. so, so that's one that was off a lot of people's radars, but I had, just because there was no mention of it means that perhaps it was a much more tight, um, tight set, but I think they went into production as late as uh, um, October of last year. So um, th that is a nice surprise. Um, we have uh, a filmmaker uh, in Joaquin Lafosse with uh, The Restless. And I believe this is his first time in competition. He's been in our Southern Regard section a couple times. Um, Joaquin Thier, The Worst Person in the World, which we had anticipated last year would be part of the comp. And um, that's one filmmaker that, uh, that uh, in a normal year could have been in our Southern Regard, I guess. But, uh, um, but yeah, finds himself in the competition. Mia Hansen Love, it's her first time in competition here. A film that I had, I thought that had skipped out, purposely skipped out uh, last year's Cannes and was perhaps headed to Venice or, or even Berlin of this year. That wasn't the case. So, um, and with Bergman Island, that represents, it's one of four feature films for Lea Sidhu, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, She's going to be all over the quasette. Um, and another filmmaker that that sort of like pivots more between, tends to be more in Cannes over Venice, but uh, Francois Ozon, uh, Toutes ces bien passées. Um, I thought this was actually going to go to Venice. Um, this guy is, really is a film a year. He was there last year with the summer of 85. I mean, physically wasn't there, but... Um, right. I, I'm very surprised to have seen him in the comp. Um, yeah, just, just, uh, and then, then we can go to Ahed's Ahed Knee um, by Nadav Lapid. Um, obviously, he won this, this, um, the, the, the Golden Bear at uh, Berlin. So um, there was a lot of anticipation for that film. Another uh, Sayed Ben Said film, I believe. Um, and then we have the return of Catherine Corsini, La Fracture. Um, she had been in comp, I believe, like almost two decades back. So there, there's, there's people that are returning. There's people that have been in other sections that are going back and forth. But there's a lot of fresh blood. It's really, really exciting. It is exciting. And speaking of returns, uh, probably the biggest return uh, to Cannes will be Ildilko and Yeti, who hasn't yes. who hasn't been in, in Cannes since 1989, or one and only time with uh, she was in uh, in Sultan Regal then, so uh, it's kind of cool to to see uh, this filmmaker in comp. Uh, God, 21 years later, I've heard uh, the story of my wife, one of the four uh, Lea Sedu productions uh, yeah. in Cannes. So I'm, that's a film I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, we have Rai Suke Hamaguchi with Drive My Car, which is sort of, we saw in the trades, uh, that gets some, some momentum in the past couple of days, which tipped its con selection uh, this morning. Um, Askar Farhadi, I don't know if we mentioned that yet, but he's back with a hero, which is easily, you know, one of the top top contenders for the Palm uh, at this point, sight unseen. Um, I was picked up by Amazon preemptively. Yes, that's we'll right. Back. And I guess we should maybe talk about this since you brought up Amazon quickly. Uh, there is a very distinct lack of streamers in this lineup. Like outside of Annette, which is Amazon for North America only, uh, A Hero and the Todd Haynes documentary, uh, The Velvet Underground, there is no Netflix at all in this lineup. Out of, like in comp, out of, well, not in comp ever, but out of comp anywhere else. Um, so it seems that Thierry is making a very strong statement here about cinema going, uh, supporting cinemas with films that a lot of them don't have distribution yet, but at least from a premiere basis, uh, he's sticking up for the films that demand to be seen in a theater. Or Netflix simply doesn't want to showcase their films if they're not going to be in competition. And that, that was the big deal with yep. the 
a couple of years back with the um, with the Inaritu's film. Um, God, I'm already drawing blanks. The black and white film. Oh, you're not in a route too, but uh, quite uh, Ron, yeah, sorry. Uh, Roma, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So as much as he would want to, I mean, I, I think he's shackled in a way that I don't, I, I'm not really sure if it is a choice that he wants to make. Um, but what I'm curious to see is what title, because I imagine there are a lot, some of these films have already been technically picked up by, by the streamers and perhaps they won't announce it. Maybe a Justin Kurtzel film. Um, Maybe, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the next, always the great thing about the lineup day is that it not only is a Christmas morning, uh, but like for you and me who follow all of the trades and dig into the minutia of, of this stuff, it's really like, it's going to be a conversation of like where these films go and all of this stuff for the next two months, really, until they premiere um, and afterwards, so. So Sean Penn was added to this lineup. Um, yeah. And as much as I want to dismiss um, Penn, uh, just based on his last, the last film that was there, um, yeah. like, like, like I was saying before, a lot of these films have benefited from extra time in post. Um, and if any of these films are in competition, I don't think Sadie needs to do any favors. It's not. It's not necessarily those relationships that we were talking about uh, beforehand. I think this is a solid gold platinum edition. Um, I, I have a, I have trouble seeing how there might be any misfires. Um, but I mean, let's. There are. You know, uh, you're being very kind to Sean Penn. I think. I, I think he does have that relationship with Thierry where he'll just call him up and be like, my film's done, great, send it over. I feel that way also about, um, we have Oliver Stone with a JFK thing, like screening as well. And like, I'm sure it's fine, but I do I think it's gonna be a high piece of art? No, <laughs> I think it's gonna be a documentary about JFK. Um, Which yeah. brings us to a really interesting point. We'll, we'll go into the Cannes premieres section, it's a new label. And this, this is sort of, we're, we're sort of like navigating towards this, uh, this uh, in our conversation. But what I want to highlight are some new filmmakers in the competition. We have Casablanca Beats um, from a Moroccan filmmaker named Nabil Ayosh. We have a Finnish filmmaker. His, his name kept on being mentioned in the trades, um, but I didn't, I didn't think for a second that compartment Number six would be in the, the main comp lineup. Uh, that's Joho Kosmanin. And um, yeah, those are, those are two films that, uh, that certainly, I'll, I'll add little asterisks to them and say I'm highly anticipating them because I was just not expecting them in the comp section more uh, along the lines of Sean Baker as well uh, for Red Rocket. And those are always the films like when you're at the festival and you're going in blind, they turn out to be some of the, 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 the loveliest surprises. These, these films, first time filmmakers, these films that haven't been really talked about, they're the ones that can really, really surprise you. Um, not to get into the, any thorny subject conversation matter here, but clearly there's no gender parity here in the competition. Uh, there's, I, I believe it's three female uh, filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think we can have this conversation without mentioning that the biggest omission, which speaks to the, the gender parity issue is Claire Denis who's nowhere to be found in this lineup and- Jane Campion as well. Sorry, and has a film effectively done. She has fire, um, at least in post, as far as we know. Yeah, she has a very weird relationships with Ken. Um, I, I remember loving Bastards and thinking, why was that in the Intercept on our guard? Mm -hmm. um, she had the comedy that she made with Juliette Binoche that was- Yeah, but uh, even that was director's fortnight. Like it seems yeah. like- Claire Denis, you know how a lot of filmmakers go to Cannes and they eventually work their way into comp. It seems like she started in comp and has, with each successive film, like went to En Sultan Regard and then went director's fortnight and now isn't anywhere in the lineup. Um, 
it's an it's an odd thing. Like it seems that Terry has a very I don't know. There's there's something there in that relationship which is which is a thing. Now. And as much as Terry probably wanted to invite Jane Campion, uh, Netflix probably put a put a, a yeah. yeah. Um, and worth mentioning some of the filmmakers that are not there. There's Ur Ulrich Settel, who's been in post for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Terence Davies, Terence Malick, uh, Alain Guradzi. Um, the, them, along with uh, Claire Denis, are, are, are some of the, the, the figures that are not there. There's the, um, the Japanese animated film, uh, Bell, that's, that's nowhere here. Yeah. Um, and those things could trickle into director's fortnight i doubt it but we'll see we'll see what happens there yeah. yeah let's go into the rest of the lineup we can yeah. and then we can talk about like where we see some gaps coming in because I, I do i agree there's probably a few more titles that will be added it'll just be interesting to see where they go um so so yeah so <laughs> the festival this year at city decided to create a section that's sort of like um, protects certain films or gives the filmmakers the option of not being in competition. Um, I find it funny that Arnaud uh, de, de Plichin and uh, Mathieu Almeric, who, who, can, who work often together, are in this new Cannes premiere section with Deception and Hold Me Tight, respectively. Uh, we have a new Hong Sang So film, In Front of Your Face. Um, we don't know what the runtime is on that, but... Um, we have uh, Mothering Sunday, Eva Husson, which I wasn't a huge fan of her last film. So perhaps this section sort of like buffers, um, creates that buffer where are we supposed to keep our expectations low? I'm not too certain. Uh, Cornell uh, Mandu Kukso, I can't even pronounce his name. Cornell, the Hungarian filmmaker that uh, uh, he, a woman and uh, white god. Yeah, uh, he's there with Evolution, which I believe is a concert theater theater film. Um, so yeah, this this new section. What what are your thoughts about the titles that were included in there? There's also Andrea Arnold. Yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting category. Um, you're right. I think it's maybe a place for, for to maybe protect filmmakers. And I didn't know that about Evolution that it's a theater piece. Um, I think so. that, yeah, and I think Andrea Arnold's Cow is like an experimental-ish documentary, so it could be a place for filmmakers to like try some different things, but not have the weight of the Palm d'Or on them. Um, mm -hmm. Or you have something like you know Oliver Stone's JFK Revisited, which to me, that screams out of competition, um, but whatever. And premiere, it, it's an odd category, um, and I think we're going to see it evolve in the next few years. But uh, it really does seem like a grab bag of um, of titles. Uh, yeah, and the Hong Sang Soo, like, who knows if it's another like one hour, one hour thing. And I love his films, and even one hour with Hong Sang Soo is like better than two hours with a lot of filmmakers. So. Um, yeah, but it's an odd bunch, uh, but big names. Like, if you're going to start a new category, it's a it's a really good mix of directors to do it with. Um, one film that strikes me as odd in the out of competition screenings is Emmanuel Berco's *De Son Vivant*, a, a film that um, uh, Catherine uh, Catherine Deneuve mm -hmm. uh, she had experienced a malaise during the filming. It fractured the filming, and then you had the whole COVID situation. Um, that strikes me as odd. Um, what are your thoughts on that title being out of competition? Um, no, I'm actually not surprised because Burko's last film is the opener, uh, right? I can uh, her previous film with Dinov. I I don't recall. I believe so. I believe she opened Ken uh, a couple years ago. Hang on, with um, Anning Tall. Yeah, Standing Tall. I believe it was an opening film. Okay. Uh, could be wrong, but it was, anyway, it doesn't surprise me. Um, it wasn't in comp on a, in either case. Um, so I'm not that surprised, to be honest. Uh, I think I, I knew it was going to show up, as, but yeah, if it's out of comp, not a big deal. Uh, I think out in the out of comp titles, the one that 
I don't think either of us were expecting was Stillwater, the Todd McCarthy, Matt Damon joint. Mm -hmm. um, I think given that, that it takes place in France probably helped it get into the, into the lineup, but, um, or it could be like, um, it could be a small, a, a secret surprise, like, or a, a film that no one is expecting um, to have some weight to it. So. Well, yeah. it does have a July release. So that's, um, that's something okay. that the, um, what, what's the distribution company again? Stillwater? It's uh, Focus. Focus. Okay. So Focus have two titles in, in the Cannes lineup. Um, yep. We'll be looking at their other one, which is in the uh, September Guard. So we have uh, a Korean, South Korean film, Emergency Declaration. We have Back Now by Cedric Jimenez. We have The Velvet Underground by Todd Haynes. And we have Aline, which is from Valerie Lemercier, um, which closes out the out of comp section. Aline is actually uh, a parody of the Celine Dion. It's a Celine Dion biopic parody. And we had seen trailers for it um, uh, um, here in Quebec. We had, uh, it was supposed to get play dates in France. So that, that, that's a curiosity. Um, hey, we need comedy, I guess. And maybe that's why it's uh, included there. Do you know anything about uh, Bloody Oranges, the Jean-Christophe um, Miri? Absolute, absolutely nothing. Okay. Absolutely not anything about it, have you? besides it being listed in screen daily um, <laughs> among their like gazillion predictions uh no uh i am unaware of its provenance um and we also have the special screenings that were included so we have a, a, a quintet of titles there um yeah the biggest the biggest of those titles i think for both of us probably being the uh anthology film, film, The Year of the Everlasting Storm, with contributions from Ty Joe, David Lowry, uh, who I'll get to in a moment, uh, Laura Poitras, uh, Jafar Panayi, so Anthony Chen. So it's a pretty interesting uh, group of directors. It's another title from Neon in the lineup. Um, that, that's one I, I have my eye on, eye on for sure. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a pandemic short collab. We had seen something on Netflix, which more or less fizzled out and wasn't yeah. much. To, but here, maybe there's a, I don't know the fact that there's less filmmakers on on this omnibus short project, um, and these are all big names. Certainly, uh, I'm a big fan of Dominga uh, Sotomayor um, and uh, Anthony Chen. He's got you know he's got. He's got the sales. Um, yeah, he's, he's set for a, a good couple of uh, films in the near future. Um, I'm actually excited about Babiar, Babiar by Sergei. Uh, I love Sergei Lozanitsa. Yes, um, you know, films aren't easy for this uh, filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, some special screenings. Uh, Kansas here has. Um, extra venues. So certainly uh, we'll make it a lot easier, I think, for journalists to sort of like um, get, uh, seek their teeth, uh, sink their teeth into these other titles, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we could pass on to the intercept and regard. I think that's where a lot of the fun surprises are at. Um, so this section sort of like rebaptize, uh, going back to its origins, um, a lot of fresh new voices. There's a lot of first time filmmakers, second time filmmakers in this batch. Uh, so yeah, what, what, uh, what sticks out for you? Um, for me, there's a few titles that, that stick out. I think uh, Eskel Votes, uh, The Innocents is a big one. Um, Koganada's After Yang, uh, another, uh, you know, follow up to Columbus. That's a, that's a big one as well. Uh, Justin Chong's Blue Bayou, which I know is one that you really have on your radar. You're very excited for that. And one film uh, that I've sort of had in the back of my mind is um, La Seville by, by Anna Mihai. It's, it's a first film and it has the producers, uh, the Dardens and uh, Michael Franco behind it. So clearly something special there uh, and worth keeping an eye on. Um, yeah, I think Christian Man Manju is also part of the production yes, that's right. as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned some Sundance alumni and the just the first three voices um, here. Um, there's also a film from Mexico by a docu Helmer, and she brought this project to the Sundance Labs. Her name's Tatiana Cuzo, and it's Noche de Fuego. Um, and like you said, there's a lot. There's um, there's a lot of um, filmmaker. There's filmmakers here that are backed by really cool entities. We have Hafsia Hersey with Bun Mea, and that's her second film. Her first film was in Cannes Critics Week two years back, and this this is a, a project by Saeed Ben Saeed. Um, but there are some established filmmakers here, at least in. A, Three voice, uh, three filmmakers that I see off the bat. There's Alexis Germain Jr. Jr. with House Arrest, and he was working on some big project um, that hasn't been put into production yet called Air. So, hey, maybe this guy is taking a taking a page from the uh, Jafar Pahani um, um, ways, uh, economic ways of making films. Who knows? There's the filmmaker, uh, the Turkish filmmaker, um, who's done Egg, Milk, and Honey. He's there, I think it's like his 10th feature. It's called Commitment Hassan. And there's Let There Be Morning by Iran uh, Kolarian, who did the band's visit. I believe that was in 2007. So there's some established auteurs, but perhaps the idea of this, this rebaptized section is to, to sh show a light on things that are uh, perhaps more avant-garde um, and out there. Um, do you want to take, um, do you want to throw in all the first-time filmmakers just to... Sure, yeah, so there's um, five first-time filmmakers um, in the in the Insultant Regard, which, as you said, is being sort of rebranded a little bit as a place for emerging filmmakers, essentially. Um, and so those five filmmakers are uh, Vladimir Johansson with Lamb, uh, Laura Wandel with Unmond, uh, Jessica Genieu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, with Freda, uh, CBE with Money Boys, and uh, Anna Mihai with uh, La Civil. Yeah, Money Boys is something that had been mentioned la for last year's edition. So again, another film that's been um, in post for a while. I could say the same for After Yang, The Innocence. Yeah. These films, we've been talking about them for God knows how much time, but um, but yeah, uh, this uh, another great section here. Um, uh, Kira Kovalenko, Unclenching the Fists. She's, I, I think, she's a the partner of um, uh, the filmmaker of Beanpole. Um, okay, his name now. Um, yeah, it's not coming to me either. <laughs> Wait, uh, Kent, uh, Kent, uh, Kentamar, um, Kentamar Balagov. There you go, Balagov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it'll be fun to see him and the same producer. I think he's filming an HBO project right now. So don't be surprised if we see him on the Quasit. You'll, you'll know why. Um, but yeah, a nice mix of um, new voices and projects that have been sort of like not dormant, but. Mm -hmm being prepared and um, perhaps overall, just, I mean, overall, like, as we mentioned, it's just a, a lineup to dream for really. Um, it, you know, time will tell how the films play out, but uh, it's rare, it's rare to get a lineup that, that is just wall, like this, just wall to wall, just filled with like, not only, you know, the big auteur stuff we love, but also like the focus on emerging filmmakers is really encouraging. Um, and this is really a true, uh, a true, um, it really does span the globe in terms of, in terms of, um, voices from all over. So it, it's exciting. It's a really exciting lineup. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what films get added. I mean, right now and where they slot in, because at least for me, like maybe, maybe there's one or one film more to go to comp maybe another and out of comp but the midnight screening section really right now only has one title so it'll be interesting to see if it's the if it's more genre fair that gets added in the next you know 
um, three to four weeks um, to fill that out. Yeah, I'm predicting at least a quart, uh, at least a quartet of titles, and and at least midnight. The midnight screenings are always can go up to three. Maybe Gaspar Noé is working on something, so maybe maybe he's going to offer that at the last minute, um, at the eleventh hour. Um, are there any titles that you were expecting that maybe you didn't see pop up? I gotta say, I was expecting to see uh, Ulrich Settle and, and Terrence Malick. Uh, the, they've been working on their films for the longest time, and uh, they're they're. I'm I'm sure Titty tried in vain to to get them to to shore up. So, yeah, question marks with with, with regarding those two titles. Um, I'm wondering if uh, David Lowry's The Green Knight might show up somewhere if maybe maybe it's going to be in Fortnite as the open air who knows but mm. uh, i mean he'll already be there sort of with uh with the omnibus film so i don't know yeah. uh i am a bit surprised there's no canadian titles in the lineup at all um so david cronenberg unfortunately is, is is filming i think in greece and canada right? like now so We'll I was kind of expecting maybe Monia Shokri's uh, babysitter to to find its way in here somewhere. Yeah, um, I'm I'm thinking it's a film that might be a little bit of a um, uh, lighter fare, so so uh, more or less like her her debut film. But maybe maybe there's room for her in the director's Fortnite. Um, yeah, and again, director's Fortnite is a little bit more. Uh, uh, I don't want to say extreme with their title choices, but uh... yeah. Uh, you mentioned Terrence Malick. We, Terrence Davies, another director who we thought might be in here is, and isn't. Um, Joanna Hogg, another filmmaker that, again, like I'm she's assuming got two. Oh, she's got two films. Yeah. I'm, um, the sequel to, um, I'm drawing a blank now. A souvenir. Yeah, the souvenir part too, and then she's yep. got that one that was shot uh, off the radar as well. So the the rumor was that souvenir part two was invited to the director's fortnight. Interesting. Last. Yeah. Um, so perhaps that's already a lock. I imagine the, the the selection committee for the director's fortnight also made more or less some of the same promises to filmmakers that were selected for the 2020 edition and uh, so I wouldn't be surprised you know maybe uh, uh, Gomez uh, uh, might be there the oh true yeah yeah like like yeah they they know what they like um we were also we were also wondering um, about Lucille I'm gonna say this name badly Hadzi Halibovic uh, yeah. With her film Earwig, uh, that's another one we thought might be ready in time, but maybe it'll go to Venice or uh, or TIFF. I think uh, language debut. Yeah, <clears throat> her, her her films are very um, amped up in the visual department. So if she needs to take a little bit more time in post, she'll take it. Um, and as we saw with her previous two films, she's in no rush to. Um, to, to push these the, these things out, but um, not impossible for directors Fortnite showing, um, and perhaps better fitted for that section. And she is the significant other of Gaspar Noé, so perhaps Noé does have a good rapport with the directors Fortnite. So who knows how that works out? But um, yeah. I guess we can talk about our Palm Door predictions for a later episode. Um, but but maybe yeah we'll do that a later episode but how about uh let's say well we, we woke up and we saw these titles this morning um and if you could pick three of them to watch today if you have you have 24 hours and you have three films to watch out of this lineup what would you choose i like this um for the comp for sure i would go for sean baker julia ducarno and uh justin kurtzel just I, I, I've got a feeling about the about Justin's film here, and I, I, I thought his uh, his last film was a masterwork, the Kelly Gang, um, yeah. of, the, of the Kelly Gang. Um, 
yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. also the wall amazing um yeah i guess I, I guess anything that feels fresh anything that feels um as if it might challenge certain conventions or challenge the filmmaker it's uh, himself and um right yeah i would have to go with uh benedetta uh memoria and uh story of my wife as my as my three i am dying to see all three of those sweet uh, yeah so I guess, uh, so yeah, so next Monday and Tuesday are when the Critics Week selections and Director's Fortnight selections get un uh, will be unveiled. So we'll have plenty to talk about in next, week, uh, next week's episode, but um, any final thoughts here? Final thoughts are um, currently looking up flights to Paris, to, to Cannes or to Paris uh, to figure out how I'm going to watch all of these films next month. So very, very excited. Um, after a year of cinemas being closed, of Ken not happening, this is a really spectacular return. So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled. Great. Well, we'll be strategizing with these same uh, variables. And uh, yeah, save me a seat in, the, in our usual yeah. spot. With Absolutely. Um, do you think um, do you think Kansas is going to give masks in their goodie bag? I hope. I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. For those who don't, it'll be, it'll be inside the uh, the tote. Like you would reach in and you get your little uh, your mask. Every year, Kansas gives tote bags. Uh, they are remarkably different every single year, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a mask to go with um, the program and all that useful information that they put in those tote bags. Um, well, nice seeing you, uh, Mr. Jagannath, and I will be speaking with you next week for a closer look at other items that are gonna be on the Quasette. Thank you very much, folks, for tuning in. Thank you, Kevin. Always a pleasure, man. See you next week. Au revoir, ciao. I'm Eric Lavallee, I'm Editor-in-Chief and Site Owner for IonCinema.com, and this is Kevin Jagernot, Contributing Writer for The Playlist. And together we are Indie Sponge.